Hello there all you lovely estrogenians and all of you top hat toting testosteroneans. I hope all is well, especially after being subjected to the uh, strange sights and sounds of this video's intro with Retrobot and Sheenatronic. Um, what you heard were some otherworldly sounds being squeezed out of this realistic Concertmate MG1 produced in 1981 by Moog for the uh, Tandy Corporation slash Radio Shack. This 31 note polyphonic synth came to me to be evaluated and brought back to overall good and reliable health. What more can any synthaholic ask for, right? Um, now, right off the bat, I want to say I'm glad to see that it appears to be functioning okay. However, I haven't um, spent the time yet to look into all of its functions. That'll be coming soon enough. I can tell you that um, when I was getting weird and groovy with Sheenatronic and Retrobot, I noticed, uh, you know, the usual dirty and semi-responsive switches and sliders or VRs that needed to be exercised, you know, back and forth numerous times to restore function. I'm sure you are not surprised by that considering um, these are, what, 40-year-old switches and VRs that doubtfully have seen any maintenance. Um, these units also sported a uh, black um, polyurethane foam insulation or lining of sorts that turns into a messy goo over time, which I really hope isn't too bad in this specimen. I'm going to open her up in a moment for a preliminary look within to see um, what awaits. However, I just want to note that there is one um, missing uh, slider knob here of which I hope I could find floating around on the net, but if not, I'll produce one here in the shop. And here we are within our little Radio Shack Moog, and as you can see, we have all of this degraded foam all over the um, control board, uh, which has no doubt worked its way into the uh, switches and VRs, of which will require a whole lot of cleaning and relubrication. And um, when I was um, sliding the uh, different VRs and all that, I could feel the uh, resistance, and uh, it's easy to tell that in uh, some in particular, uh, this crap has worked its way into the openings and is kind of impeding the otherwise smooth and effortless flow of these um, uh, sliders here. So anyways, let me go ahead and uh, zoom in so you can kind of take a better look. And I'll just zoom in on a just a section and you can see what I'm what I'm talking about, just how bad it is. And, um, yeah, like, all this crap, I mean, look, look at all that. It's just, and I mean, it's really, really nasty. You can, you can see on my finger how, yeah, just how nasty this crap is. So, anyways, let me zoom out, and uh, this might take a, take a moment. This thing really zooms out slow, you know. I don't know what the deal is, but it is what it is. It ain't what it ain't. All right. So, anyways, um, now I'm also going to um, perform, you know, of course, a full electrolytic recap and, you know, check all additional component tolerances, replace what is needed, and, uh, you know, check the integrity of all the wiring, connectors, solder joints, etc. So, um, stay tuned for part two as I dive in and get this little sugar plum freshened up. I just wanted to mention in closing that um, eventually, as soon as I level off the workload a little more here in the shop, I'll be producing um, videos of greater length and detail. Um, however, while I bounce between a lot of equipment, it's just easier for me to um, break these videos up a little more. So anyways, thank you for watching. Um, take care of yourselves. And like I always say, peace, love, rock and roll, and of course, vintage audio. This is a poor man's shoe production.